Did a little work on the V15. Uh, a couple things. Uh, where the dolly rides, there's a real soft spot in the hull. And the handrail's completely ripped out. So I'm gonna mix the epoxy up over here. I strongly recommend these pumps. One pump of epoxy to one pump of hardener. Easy to measure out. You have to use a lot of pumps this time, probably 10 or 15 pumps. The uh, filler I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put in enough 406 to bring the epoxy and hardener compound up to about catch up consistency. And then uh, after everything's on, I'm gonna come back and make a little epoxy with 407, which is a super low density, uh, easy fairing fiber. And you can put that on uh, right after you fiberglass while it's still tacky, and that'll make uh, it super easy to sand smooth. So I got three layers of fiberglass tape, alternating layers and directions. Since it's totally set up and it's still pretty soft in these regions, uh, I'm gonna just do a fairing coat and a structural coat. Doesn't take any more time. I got three widths of fiberglass to put right along the uh, key line that I've marked with a marker. And that is so there's no sharp edges and it uh, tapers to the center of the boat. At the base of the mast here, I did uh, one layer of epoxy with uh, fiberglass tape, uh, three pieces, and now I've gone over that with uh, West System uh, epoxy with the 406 um, silica, so that's a structural epoxy. Um, I'll sand that smooth. your masking off right away because once the uh, epoxy sets it's really hard to get the tape out of there and then you often have to sand deep just to get your tape off. Now I'm going to go across it with this pneumatic sander. I've got 80 grit on here and I can take very long strokes with this and flatten the entire surface. This is a handy tool. They're not too expensive. You can pick one up at uh, Northern Tool and then you can buy these long adhesive strips of 80 grit sandpaper that go on the bottom. Finishing up sanding the 410 fairing compound off the side of the hull here. We got a lot of the 410 in it, so this sounds very easily. It's just like air. Using a hand sander, you can feel high spots a little bit better than with the power sanders, so you know where to spend a little more time. But remember, always long strokes to finish up. A couple tips on making your sandpaper last as long as possible and cut as efficiently as possible. After you've cut it to size, run it along the edge of a table or a surface that breaks up some of the rigid bonds to the paper and makes the sandpaper last longer. Another thing you can do is add a little fairing disc compound. This is a very weak adhesive. Put that on the back and then onto your tool. And that keeps the sandpaper from moving on the tool. It'll get better cutting efficiency and the paper will last longer. So we're just about done with the fairing sanding here. The question is sometimes how low do you go? Well, you let your longboard decide. If you're going long across long strokes, some of the fairings should be left in the low spots, but you should fair down elsewhere till you just start to see the compound underneath 
show through. Along the edges, you shouldn't see any straight edge. Your edge should end up cloudy and smoothed right into the adjoining surface. So this is the portion of the hull where the strap of the dolly rode. And over the years, that flexing completely degraded the fiberglass. It's like paper here, I could push it. So I've got some glass on the exterior here and I'll fare that and finish it off, but I wanted to get a stringer on the inside of the hull to really add some stiffness there. So I've cut this stringer out of cedar and tapered the ends so that there won't be any stress points where it ends. I'm gonna use the access ports we cut to get this stringer epoxied into the inside of the hull. But it's hard to keep it up against the hull while it dries, so I cut this notched piece. So I'll slide the batten in here with the epoxy already on it. And then I can use this notched piece to shove it up against the hull while it dries. Okay, we're about ready to put the batten in. So I got the batten cut with a notch for the cutout because it fits really close. And then uh, holes pre-drilled. We're gonna put the batten in and then use these screws through the original holes to draw the batten right up against the side of the boat and hold it in place while we glass it in. I have to take the decal off so I can paint. Good way to do that is with a decal eraser. This is, this is literally eraser material, just rubber material. Sits on the end of the drill. The previously painted parts of the hull are in good shape, so I just need uh, 150 grit sandpaper to rough them up and get them ready to paint. Getting ready to paint the hull. First, I want to get it very clean, so I've gone over the whole thing with water and degreaser. Uh, now I'm going to go over it with this uh, aspirator for the compressor. Oh. The hull is going to have a blue stripe here. And this part of the deck that's blue will be repainted blue. Just have this roughly taped off. The blue will spray to here. And then when we paint the rest of the hull white, we'll get a very precise line to define the blue line. That's been, that's been, oh my goodness, oh, three, five. You just stop me 